strategies and development for AECOM um, in from Hong Kong, but it seems like we're spending a lot more, or we're going to be seeing a lot more of him in the Philippines. So welcome. Come Thank on you. Here. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Well, honor of being the last speaker, which means uh, I hope that everyone has their coffee well filled. Um, thanks a lot, Richard, and thanks for everyone for sticking around to, uh, to see the end of this. This, you know, we've been hearing so much about the, the potential and the growth of the Philippines. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. We do have a uh, hundred strong uh, team uh, based here in Manila. Uh, covering everything from uh, economics to uh, landscape, master planning, architecture, engineering, uh, and go on. Um, and, and today, kind of rounding out this uh, thread of thought about healthy cities and places of great work, I, it, it's, it's really exciting to me because uh, folks, uh, you know, I've been looking at projects around the world for the past 20 years. Uh, things from resilient studies to green master plans to mixed use and, uh, and even urban design guidelines. And these days, this idea of smart cities keeps popping up, right? Everyone's heard about it. Everyone's heard of sustainable cities and healthy cities and everything. And so we, we've been doing a lot of work around smart cities so many people in the industry are trying to define it, trying to say, well, what exactly is a smart city? What goes into it? They try to draw pictures that, that encapsulate this very complex idea. Um, we, we've been able to help a few people kind of articulate that. Uh, with Samsung, we did a smart city in Xi'an. Essentially, we, we described it as the integration of technology to maximize sustainability, and that's not just green sustainability, e ecological, but economic and social sustainability as well, uh, to improve citizen well-being, supporting economic development. I mean, we're all here because we're trying to create great uh, economic growth. Right? Um, this, is, this is that Tian uh, Smart City. Uh, it, very interesting. We went through a whole process that included uh, metrics. If you can't measure it, it's very hard to, to say it's a smart city. Uh, we looked at so many different layers, uh, like retail and open space and transport and communications, uh, residential. We ended up creating what, what we call the Sustainable Systems Integration Plan. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a nice tool. We've, we've uh, uh, been able to help uh, Singapore with a few projects in, in helping them lead the region, uh, we think, in thinking holistically around uh, sustainability and, uh, and the city some of the, the things. What's, what's very interesting is our process uh, it includes very strong socio-cultural uh, me measurements, uh, very economically driven, and uh, it's all about monitoring, not just doing it once, but sticking through it uh, over time. You know, so, okay, so smart cities. They're all the rage. Everybody's doing it, right? India's going to do 100. Uh, everybody in the world says they're a smart city. I think this this map even includes our own uh, uh, BGC as a, as a smart city. Thing. What, uh, what's common? A lot of the technology platforms, they, they, uh, they're part of the mix. You know, it, it, the smart side of it is rooted in uh, creating better access to information so we can make great decisions about the city. You know, we know how, how it runs. Um, what could it mean here? Uh, you know, I, we're, we're still, some of our cities are still grappling with the basics, with, with, uh, with waste, with poverty, with, with safety issues, with resilience issues. I mean, are we, as a country, even ready for the smart city concept? I would argue, yes. Uh, you know, we've, we've had amazing growth, and yet so much of that growth is happening right here in the Metro Manila region. It means a lot of competition for resources, right? I mean, try, trying to get here this morning, uh, that's, that's a testament to the, the traffic. We, we saw that great video. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting statistics. I mean, just that, that there's so much of it. 82% of the services-related GDP is right here. Of, of the country, is right here in Metro Manila. So 
these are the folks who are doing your, uh, you know, the BPOs, the shift uh, type of, uh, of industries. It's, it's a lot of concentration. So we're, we're very familiar with this, right? And there we are. Uh, there's the fort. So smart cities would do so much, uh, you know, being able to, to understand what's going on in the city through information, right? Uh, we could figure out how to optimize our water, our land, our energy, you know, having smarter metering so that we're not paying such exorbitant rates. Transport, we could fix things with smart systems that tell people where the, the empty parts of, of the existing roads are versus the congested areas. Uh, better health and education monitoring. Essentially, imagine a, a dashboard for the city. Fantastic, right? The, the, uh, the way that we can run and make decisions uh, to, to help the, the city and its systems uh, run smoother. It sounds expensive. <laughs> There's a, there is definitely a technological side to all this, but you know, one of the things that we say and, and try to coach our clients and our cities uh, is that it's not just about technology. This is where it's really important for the building. It's very much uh, about the people themselves. It's, it's about us. Uh, at the heart of SMART are people, are the jobs that are created. And when we do our master plans in these SMART cities, we help think about the operational needs of businesses, the aspirational desires of the stakeholders, the, the competitive advantage of the, the community and the well-being and equity of, of the end users and their families. I mean, that is the, knowing the stakeholders and, and the aspirations is a huge part of it. And there's so many opportunities in, in the Philippines for these smart cities. Cities that are about smart thinking, right? Uh, port relocation here, and there's so much change in Metro Manila, but also the Clark Green City, which we, we are a part of, uh, which is a part of, of taking the energy and the economics uh, away from, uh, you know, out of just being in Metro Manila. So the rest of the country starts to, to participate in this economic uh, growth. Um, so the opportunities there, 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 there are five kind of areas. I think that uh, you don't have to be all about technology to be doing smart cities. Uh, we, we look at places of industry, we look at wellness, we look at the aspirations of the communities themselves, economic engines and strategic planning. These are all kind of going back to the basics of what is great place making. And that's really smart. Um, looking at logistics and ports and airports and understanding they're not always going to be the same. I mean, 3D printing is changing the way that uh, logistics and delivery and commerce is happening. Flexibility in the backbone of our economy is smart. So we try to build in that kind of flexibility. ACOM uh, has been involved for many years in the, in the Hong Kong Airport National Plan. We're still doing uh, airport city work that thinks not just about logistics, trucks moving things around to feed the underbellies, but uh, commercial opportunities right there at the airport. In fact, I live right next to it, so it's, it's all about airport, city, living, I live what I do, right? Uh, or in Singapore, we're looking at the, uh, the redevelopment of the port. As the port moves away, what, what happens to that space? So again, it's an evolution and, and building in flexibility over time for what used to be just backbone service, you don't think about so much into a real living waterfront uh, for Singapore. It covers a lot of the uh, connectivity to the waterfronts uh, uh, and very much about and even using some of the, the water and the edges of the, of the waterfront as uh, not just a working waterfront, but a recreational and, and a resource. Wellness, we've heard so much today, which is great, about healthy buildings, about great planning for, for us as the stakeholders and the shepherds of our cities, right? Uh, well, physical and mental health, we've heard a lot about stress and de-stress. Uh, that kind of productivity is smart. Uh, you know, when we did the plan for Saudia Island, it was very much about understanding the future of Abu Dhabi, creating a framework that, that, that let education and culture create a more healthy, environment, not just physically, but uh, culturally as well. Uh, 
there's this plan in Warsaw, which is very interesting, because it's just outside of the, the, the center of the city. And instead of the normal gated community type of new development, very, very open, permeability, walkability, and this was one of the, 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 the few big built master plans uh, where we were able to measure uh, health indices. And we found the highest birth rate in Poland, uh, very low child obesity rate, and a very healthy cancer rate uh, after years of population. So we, you know, we don't get these measurements very often. Let, let, you can compare that to, to us today, right? Here we are, uh, next to Green next to Green Belt. And look at the size of these blocks. And I purposely drew these uh, you know, big circles around the Urden at uh, in San Lorenzo Village because they're not open to the public. Right? There's, there isn't a chance to walk and permeate through these places. Even the size of, uh, you know, of, of some of the blocks in uh, the Gatsby, in the South Santa Village uh, compared to what's now sort of the norm of smaller, more permeable blocks is a, is a big step to, to a smarter and healthier place. So, and, you know, a, a lot of people have looked at what's the value of a healthy organization. Uh, they, they found that uh, in some companies with, with a real strong health program, less turnover, fewer sick days, uh, generally better financial performance. So tackling these types of issues, not just on an organization or business level, but on a whole city level, now that's very smart. And so let's look at that, those whole communities, right, about inclusivity and integration. We're, we're hearing a lot of, of interest in, a, in a affordable housing and making sure that's part of these new developments. It's fantastic. It's that connectivity through our common spaces and open spaces that is smart. Uh, the river of life in uh, KL. We, we ended up moving a whole team out there and, and built a big office to, to make sure that the revitalization of that central river uh, became a valuable addition for everybody, not just uh, the landowners around. Uh, and of course, here at Clark Green City. And just to, just to dive in a little bit more into what that plan was about, you know, if, if you look carefully, the the, the places between each of the parcels that we've drawn are about offering a bit more open space and making sure it's, it's real open space. It's, it's a place that you can escape to and feel a little reprieve from stresses of the day. That kind of real identity making, that's very smart. It's, you know, it's a very holistic plan. We, the, the farms that, uh, that Mel was talking about uh, they're part of also ensuring that the, uh, that the existing people who live there can participate and have a little bit of uh, you know, upside to, to what we're bringing. And that's very important because with, with, with open space, we, it's, it's a very strange statistic, but as we've seen villages grow into cities, we've seen everything get, hot, get, get hotter, hotter and hotter. Uh, and you know, with that comes public health issues as well. So that's very smart. Now, economic engines, uh, technology, business, the connectivity to the users themselves—that is super smart. It's not just about wiring, but it's about this wiring. It's about this was a project. I, I did the master plan in 2005. It was in Bangalore. And uh, I think the owners bought the land. It was about 100 acres or maybe 12 million US. Last year, uh, they sold it to Blackstone for 300 million. Great. Six months later, they leased it. They leased a third of it for half a billion dollars. So, you know, times three, basically a $1.5 billion project. Fantastic. Because, that's a great master plan. No, because it was. Uh, it was a great team effort that involved people who understood the tenants. The, the, the head of Microsoft uh, Real Estate was a big piece of this, this plan from the very beginning. And he understood that the tenants in Bangalore at the time, they needed certain things. They needed the, the, the ability to gather. This was the only site in the whole outer ring world, road that had commercial activity, like restaurants, for when these shifts of folks, you know, three shifts a day, 
would get off. Everybody else nearby, Extension, um, Cisco, they, they didn't have that. So we thought bigger, we knew what the community needed, and, uh, it, and that kind of thing elevated this plan to such, such, uh, such heights. So that's, that's the economic engines that I'm talking about. Now take that to the big, big, big picture of position. What does that mean for competitiveness, not just you know, for us, not just in the Manila or the, or the Philippine context, but Southeast Asia or for the world? That context is very, very smart. Uh, we're looking at, you know, we, I talked about that sustainable, integrated model. It's taking that to the next step. A lot of other factors to make an educated decision about where you are in the world. Did you know that our team, Brian included, um, uh, were part of the initial plans for uh, uh, BGC? And, and our, our, our folks have been following it over time. And to see it come to fruition and see BPOs and other tenants come in, see Charlie's success in the, in the area, uh, it's great. So far, so good. You know, so much built already. But now, what's the next step? And that strategic thinking about, you know, we, we, just, we just saw these numbers of does it all have to be here in the Milwaukee? It becomes, you know, what we're trying to do now, there's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of our clients who are asking us, okay, thanks for helping us in our country. Let's look beyond the borders. Are we ready to invest in the Philippines? Or are we ready to invest? We have, we have uh, clients. From China, for example, who are you know all about the outflows. Uh, what I'd like to be able to say is yes, there is a broader strategy in this country, in other countries, etc. Uh, so that and we're helping them. There's there's a there's a project we're doing for uh, for one of our clients you know, across ten cities in China, which is exactly that strategically figuring out what we want to do before we figure out uh, you know the, the next what what's going to. Um, and now we're taking that, and this is so exciting, we're taking that to national level. We just advised Mongolia, like the government of Mongolia, about uh, how to go from just having plans that go on a bookshelf to, to implementing and carrying through uh, all of these great ideas that, that, that we're all coming up with. So, smarter than smart, that's what I'm calling it. It's not just about smart technology, it's about understanding what drives people and great places, and that's really, really smart. Uh, you know, it, it, I'm very thankful because we're, we're backed up at ACOM with, now it's 100,000 people around the world. Um, in, I'm not gonna read the numbers. They're really big. But, but with 20 billion as revenue, it, it gives us a lot of breadth, a lot of expertise to tap into, but the most important thing out of that is that we are here, is that that expertise becomes uh, like uh, uh, Dodo over there, who is part of our uh, our team in Manila, leading the design group, uh, and then Brian, who came in from Singapore. I'm, I'm in Hong Kong, but I'm here all the time. It's about being uh, able to create and sustain and enhance uh, great cities. More importantly, the people who are part of it. At the end of the day, it's it's people and, and our future that we have to, to look forward to. Thanks so much.